to know God's love is to experience bliss. Often I experience when I am filled with God's love and communing with Jesus. Often I, I hear that it elicits feelings of excitement or people getting turned on. And I'll say, you're getting turned on by Jesus. And this tends to elicit shame in people. But it is right for you to witness someone having a visceral humanly experience with God and for it to excite you. The thing about it is to call that energy out of those primal centers. Those primal centers that that just make us want to devour someone and call it up into, into the truth of our divinity to allow that God's presence to, to meet who we are in our heart space. And so when you experience this, this fire that is building within you, it is a fire that is igniting from your creator spark. And that excitement is every cell in your body that desires for you to raise that fire and bring it up, up through all of your, your centers to bring it out of those base root um, needs and attachments to bring it out of the um, the sexual centers to understand that when it hits our our solar plexus this is when we have a a choice to choose it is when our willpower is tested and if you are just desiring to um, quench your thirst, so to speak, and take those sexual, sensual desires out on one another, then you won't experience it in the solar plexus. But when you, you choose, because it is a choice, to bring that energy up into the solar plexus in a allow yourself to sit there not needing to do anything for instant gratification and this is where your ego will be triggered and it is important to understand that the ego was developed when you're going through the process of individuation and every single time that you uh, shared your light, shared who you were with the world, and you got shamed or shunned for it, you built this character, this, this being that protects you against love. It lashes out at people. It tells you that, you know, it tells you either good things or bad things about yourself, depending on how your ego is um, developed and how it kept you safe. And so at this center, it is to sit and, and allow that energy to rise. And when it is not instantly gratified and that ego wants to come and take over and say you are, you're attracted to someone and what you're really attracted to is God within them. And that is the truth with anything and anyone that we are attracted to. It is our desire to look for God. And so just understand that. And maybe this will help in surrendering that shame program that does not belong to the truth of your divinity. And so understanding that we are always searching for God and it doesn't matter if we are searching through relationships with one another or drugs or actions or attachments it is always a search to find god and so by activating the center 
that creator spark within you. It allows for you to no longer search on the outside for that God presence and instead experience it inside of your body. And so you are in your solar plexus and it is conscious choice to and to surrender the little ego I am not and bring that energy up into the solar and allow yourself to experience the, the divine willpower, the divine will, the divine will that is like a sacred key that unlocks the next center. And it is only when you have that solar that is aligned with Christ, that's aligned with God. If you could just visualize yourself having a, a holy sun in your solar, we often associate, um, you know, going after things from that primal devouring energy as having strong willpower but this is having a strong ego desire to devour it's very different and i see it as this this um this splitting away and when we choose to to know more of god to embody more of god and surrender the ego it is a surrendering process, I should say. And then this key comes out of your solar and it unlocks what I see as this, <laughs> this like warrior armor that we have placed around our heart. For lifetimes, we have attempted to attempted to go about ways of keeping ourselves safe and we've gone about that from the ego from that that illusion that we can die or ever be separated from god that ego's desire to perpetuate itself to keep itself safe by keeping itself separated and out of harm's way but I can assure you that none of us came here on this planet to not remember the truth, to not have human experiences. The way that we allow ourselves to awaken and arise is by meeting the Christ within and meeting it within all of the inhabitants of this planet. and taking each, you can say, assignment or relationship as a part of yourself. And sometimes those mirrors that come into our lives, they come to reflect the really painful parts. And it is important for us to understand that most of the time when we're having a relationship with someone and things that are painful are coming up, it's not about you and that other person. And if you could have this level of detachment in the sense of not going to those programs of you always do this, you never do that, and da 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 da, and you're having a conversation with somebody that maybe you've only known for a week and you're yelling at them about the things that your mother and father did to you. And you're not seeing the correlation. And we all do this. And in the moment that our survival instincts get triggered, we go into defending against love. And don't get me wrong, we are animals and we have primal nature. And survival instincts were put in place for our for our understanding of what is happening around us and how the body, the body is very young. If you can just imagine that this body has only been 
alive for as long as you've been physically incarnated. But your soul and your spirit are ancient. And so when we are only coming from our body's wisdom, that is a very young consciousness. But it isn't to throw the baby out with the bathwater because a lot of the times we will override the body. We won't listen to the body at all. When we don't understand that when the body is speaking, it never lies. It's going to tell you from a very primal feeling flavor what is happening inside of you. And so it is so incredibly important that we have this holistic experience with our 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 body and our soul and our spirit and i feel like the path of ascension is the marrying of that trinity within us it is to awaken that seed that spark that creator light inside of us that has always existed therefore we could have never been separated from god it isn't possible ever not to mention that we we live on a planet that has the mother in, we are like in the universal mother's womb. And so there's so many ways that we could never be separated from God, but we've simply forgotten. And that is the, the illusions upon this planet. That we have these choices to choose to suffer, to choose not to remember that we are part of God that we are creator beings, that we have so infinite amount of, of power and resources and love and um, knowledge and wisdom when we choose to remember the truth of who we are. But when we're coming from those lower centers that just desire to devour one another, you're coming from that little ego I am not, and you will only get as far as you're going to get coming from that, that narcissistic bubble that we tend to live in when we are, are suffering in fear. And so it isn't to fight the ego. It isn't to deny our feelings. It is to make a conscious choice to surrender the ego and every time that it comes up to try to defend or run programs and patterns, it is just to nurture that part like a, a small wounded child that is afraid. To comfort that part of you. To tell it that it's safe. To invite in the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, to reparent that part of you so that through the process of individuation, your individuation process can be a beautiful unfoldment where everything, can you imagine? Can you imagine how much attention that the world gives to babies? Everything a baby does, for the most part, is so cute and amazing or just like a puppy. It's like the baby starts to crawl and oh my God, everybody's hooing and hollering and and then the baby walks, the baby goes potty, everybody's clapping. And I understand we've all had our own variations of this experience. Some of us didn't, didn't have those kinds of experiences even in, as a small baby. But the beautiful thing about our consciousness is that we are all connected. And so if even one embodiment has experienced that on a on a visceral level, you with your conscious free will can choose to imagine what that feels like. You can play along those lines of communication in our consciousness and you can breathe that in and you can allow yourself to experience it in the here and now. Or you can keep running those programs and telling yourself that what is available to everyone else isn't available to you and that this world has hurt you and so you are using that as an excuse to stay broken. And there's no judgment in that because we all have our path to walk and everyone has a choice. And whatever you choose, it, it is up to you. 
is truly your experience. Some people really did choose to come down to this, this life and just to know suffering. Some people just came down here to experience food, sex. Some people just came down to um, be an artist. Everyone has our own intention for physically manifesting. And it's not just like a desire that we have from a very primitive level of consciousness. No, this comes from looking at the greater whole and what is going to help your soul's path of of evolution. And so if that specific experience serves you, then that is what you'll choose. But often that is not what I see. I I it's very rare that I see someone who whose soul contracted just to come here to suffer. Most of us chose to to experience the things that we had done to others in other lifetimes and um, almost like a, a way of cleaning up our mess because by us consciously choosing to go down and and feel those experiences that we had done to others and find our way to healing, we can heal it for that entire consciousness. And others of us, um, it was going to be through us coming and fully forgetting and then taking our own lives or having a drug overdose. It was going to be that in and of itself, us coming down, knowing suffering, knowing separation, choosing to walk the path of coping mechanisms, trying to fill a void that will never be filled and seeing what a bottomless pit that is and us dying, that that ripple that that would send out into the collective would awaken people. And so maybe that was your path. But even that, when people choose to take their own lives or overdose or whatever you have like the a lot of the the deaths that we have upon this planet are suicide you know choosing not to to listen to your body choosing to not take care of yourself choosing to continue to do things that you know are killing you and having the consciousness of guilt and shame about it that's suicide even if you die from liver cancer or something it's still suicide so there is no judgment in in the past that we walk and um, what we chose when we incarnated. So for us to have our two eyes of duality and to look thinking that it's morality and judging the world around us is just us simply failing in our tests. Because our path here is to walk and to remember that we are Christ and to see the Christ in all. And so if somebody is standing in front of you and really not acting very Christy, and that is testing you or tempting you to judge them, then you're the one that failed, not them. So just remember that. When that ego comes up to try to defend itself, when really it's you looking through your two eyes of judgment and feeling jealous or envious that they're allowed to do things that you have taught yourself or have been taught that you're not allowed to do. It would be better for you to just go towards those things that you judge, allow yourself to have the experience and make the conscious choice that it's just not really for you versus trying to diet or um, keep yourself away from doing bad things. That consciousness has not changed. Even if you never pick up another drug in your life, if you're constantly, you know, one moment away from relapse, you're still, you've never healed the consciousness. You're still technically a drug addict. And so this is about inviting us to rise in our level of consciousness. It is about understanding that everything that is here that we experience, it has a purpose and you have a purpose 
and you finding what that purpose is is important and us really allowing ourselves to come out of these these primal centers these these addictive programs these this carnivorous devouring energy to like attack one another or like feed off of one another it's it's very um um caveman uh but i understand we've all had those experiences and there's nothing wrong with having passionate desires there's nothing wrong with that it's about bringing those out of addiction and so when we make this this conscious choice and if you could just if we could just all imagine what it would feel like if during the the process of individuation when we were finding how we are and are not like other we're finding our sense of self our sense of autonomy if everything that we created if the world around us applauded for us and even if we stumbled they encouraged us to do whatever it is that lights us up that allows us to experience that god frequency within us Think of how much different your life would be. Think of how you'd be living right now. You'd have no fear, no doubt, no worries, no judgment, no expectations, no defense against love. Everything you do would come from this, this childlike joy and curiosity and wonder and love and that divine willpower in the light of Christ would keep you going. It would keep you filled with with energy because you're not dying instead you're expanding you're living you're rising and so in that divine willpower a key comes out and unlocks the heart center and those those mm, those shields that armor that we have wore for lifetimes, it gets unlocked. And that, that fire, that God spark gets to penetrate into your heart. <laughs> and this beautiful explosion of liquid light comes out of your heart and through every single cell of your body. And this explosion of light is, is, what, is what the world feels when they encounter you. And this also runs down into our hands and allows us to have these beautiful sacred healing hands that can set the intention to allow God's healing presence frequency to channel through them and to marry it with the truth of their divinity and place hands on someone who is ill or blind or crippled and allow them to rise out of that illusion. And so from this place, it is to embody in that bliss state it is to embody as that experience of love and this is different than than channeling because this comes from inside of us and so as that is experienced and you live from that that presence of of divine love that needs no defense then another key comes out to unlock our Christ center into our throat. And when we uh, have activated the Christ center, the ego has been surrendered or fully actualized. So there isn't those attack thoughts, words, or deeds that we speak to the world around us. It just isn't possible and yes as we are awakening these centers of course we will slip so forgive yourself and remember what i said when we are in the lower centers it is better for you to 
intentionally allow yourself to have a drink than to continue to shame yourself or tell yourself that it's bad or when you see other people in the world drinking around you, you're judging them. That energy is toxic. It is better for you to say, I'm going to consciously have this donut and I'm going to feel great about it because it's so delicious and it just melts in my mouth. Or I'm going to have that glass of wine and maybe I'm going to have that glass of wine and figure out, I actually don't like this. I've actually allowed myself to fast long enough that I don't even crave it anymore. And so to get to that level of consciousness where you're not coming from a place of addiction, but really it's this place of, of allowing yourself to, to have what it is that you would like knowing that it is simply you desiring to experience God and also knowing God inside of yourself. And so you can have one glass of wine or one donut. You don't need to order 12 donuts or, you know, finish two gallons of wine. Like it doesn't come from that addictive place of trying to fill a void that will never be filled by this outside world, no matter how much we try. And we all know that feeling to some level and extent. And so when the Christ Center gets activated and unlocked, it is this, 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 I see it like you have this like strong core, like there's no wobble in the words that you speak. You know truth. And you may not see it from this center. You may only know it and know, know, know truth. And you speak truth. And then after that center is mastered, that energy comes up. And I'm just saying that this is what happens to unlock them and awaken completely. But as we are bringing that energy up, you can experience those centers being activated by that God fire within you without having mastery over the centers. That's why often we experience a relationship or um uh you know like a holy instant a holy experience with somebody and we're like oh that was really good can we get that some more and then we get into relationships with people and we're trying to attain that first initial like feeling flavor and then we get mad at one another because we're still attempting to fill a void with something on the outside And so because we don't know it inside of ourselves, because those centers haven't been unlocked, we don't have that strong foundation, that strong core that allows for us to have holy relationships that are centered in God. We're not looking at one another attempting to fill a void. We're not coming at each other with that carnivorous desire to devour one another and then pissed off when we aren't able to attain what it is we're expecting. And so this is why, this is why we tend to get addicted to things as we, even having a spiritual experience or making love to somebody that is, that allows that that kundalini fire to rise out of that base, those base centers and into this this heavenly orgasmic um, bliss state that can allow you to experience different galaxies and dimensions. And it also, um, it allows for two souls to merge and there is no longer um, a separation and, and your your spirits are able to to dance in the heavenly realms and your souls are interplaying and uh, when, that's why they say that 
the short path to enlightenment is through an orgasm, but not through those lower centers of, of just, you know, mutual masturbation or devouring one another. That is very different. And so I see often when people experience the awakening to these higher centers and that energy comes up, that um, it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful experience to witness and experience in myself. And often this, this elicits, you know, a lot of tears or people feeling like it is the person that's doing it to them. And that's why we have like gurus and, um, <laughs> you know, cults and all of that. It's because that master teacher is able to help a person experience those frequencies of God. But when they don't have the other centers mastered, they are easily swayed into their ego. And so I feel like every single guru or cult leader like they all started out with very beautiful innocent pure intention but then they were compromised and they allowed for those egos desires to devour so it is important for all of us to understand when we are choosing a guide or a mentor or teacher to not worship or idolize them for that is witnessing and idolizing a false god and it is tempting them to fall into that perception as well and when the ego thinks that it's god it's not pretty (laughs) it isn't and and so from that christ center this is when this is when we experience god presenting to us and God knows when it is time for our inner sight to activate for our inner sight to be fully actualized and awakened and so again when we've we've experienced you know um, people do like psychedelics or I don't even know if that's really um, can compare to um, having that inner sight turned on all the time it's, it's like um, a th- synthetic version, I would say. And when you know truth, you don't desire those synthetic versions any longer. I know that I, I personally have never, never desired, desired any type of hallucinogens or anything like that because my inner sight has always been activated and when you have that inner sight, it takes a lot of, a great level of responsibility. It takes a great level of responsibility to be able to see in all dimensions and, um, and to know what to do with it. To know how to not um, fall into fear or not to rush in with with a god complex or know even how much to share with people that don't see it's hard to it's impossible i feel for us to really understand and integrate and acclimate to somebody else's consciousness so if somebody is teaching you from christ consciousness and you're just conceptualizing of it it's really hard to understand it it's really hard to put it into practice and that is why it is is great to i love the teachers that have come up with like step-by-step processes and people that can really um, teach in that way because it it's so incredibly helpful to have a step-by-step process but then again just remembering to come back to your center and to never worship anything as a false god you know um, allowing yourself to have a great experience with life 
without being attached to it, without being addicted to it, without needing it in order to be so X, Y, and Z. And, and so when God comes and, and says that we are ready to awaken, to remember fully the truth and see, and then that, that, that gnosis comes up from the Christ center and God comes into our crown and activates that third eye and that sight is turned on, then we see, know, and speak only love. And there's no doubt or wobble within us. And it frustrates some. It frustrated all of the apostles that were still perceiving from duality. Because that, that center, that, that foundation, they weren't fully actualized to, to have that full remembrance yet. It is a process and we are all on our own journeys. And there is no linear time or hierarchy. And so when that awakening or activation comes, what you see and know is never, it's never influenced by ego illusions. Because remember, the ego has fully actualized. And so even the ego, the identification of your separated being, um, it knows God. It knows love. It knows itself. It knows how to be an individual creator spark of Christ on earth. It knows how to show up in form, but take the world as part of itself. It knows how to activate and initiate the world around it just by being the presence. And and this allows for all of the neuropathways in our, our mind to light up like a Christmas tree. And that is why you see Buddha with that thousand petal lotus on his head. It is saying that the lights are all the way on. He is awakened here in the physical realm. And, and I feel that this is the path that we are all here to walk. And whether we complete our mission, so to speak, in this lifetime or not we're all on this path and we're traveling here together and so I just wanted to share that with all of you and remind you to see the Christ in all and know that there is no judgment and wherever you are on the path it is still possible for you to experience energy in awakening of God's presence in all of you. And it's really a choice how much healing and, and desire for spiritual growth and that balance that we, um, we allow for these centers to naturally unlock and for us to know more of the God presence embodied in form. My name is Kendra and I'm the Divine Purpose Mentor. If you guys would like to work one-on-one one -on -one with me or join any of my courses, you can find me at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. I love you all so very much.